Visa Yab Migration Services, managed by Dr. Siros Ahmadi, invite you to watch the community TV show. This program is proudly supported by New Zealand Government. Persia NZ, Persian community in New Zealand. Hello and welcome to the Community TV Show. In this program, we would like to get closer to the people with talents, arts, experiences, as well as learn about different nationalities, cultures, and ethnicities within our multicultural society in New Zealand. In this season, we would like to learn about Persian New Zealanders. We will learn about the culture, the cuisines, the music, and more. This is going to be an interesting show, so stay tuned and let's get to know more about the Persian community in New Zealand. Persia is home to one of the world's oldest, most continuous major civilizations with historical and urban settlements dating back to 7000 BCE. When the human evolution comes to the stage of civilization, Persia was one of the first countries in the world to be built up of different cities with certain characteristics in technology and cultural developments. Persia was then continued with the world's first and biggest empires for thousands of years with certain geographical boundaries and powers. Today we're going to have a chat with Mr. Fashat Safavi who will be taking us further into the rich Persian culture, history and tell us more about the Persian community here in New Zealand. So, let me take you there. very much for joining us today. Um, just before we start the whole uh, uh, questions about uh, the Persian culture and the history of uh, Persia, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you for having me here. My name is Farshad Safavi. I've been living in New Zealand for a long time, nearly 27 years actually since 1995. Uh, currently I'm working in the Traffic Control Department of Waitimata District Health Board and I am also a certified translator and interpreter for the Persian community and I am also a member of uh, Persian uh, community in New Zealand. Uh, I don't know what else you want to know. Yeah, no, thank you so much for sharing that. Now we know a little bit about you and could you please share with us a little bit more about the history of Persia so the sure. audience at home are familiar with it as well. Well, Persia has a long time history actually. It has 3000 written history and it has uh, more than 7,000 years uh, unwritten history. Actually, uh, Persian history is too long, but long story short, uh, I would like to focus on the founder of Persia, Cyrus the Great. 
uh, who was the founder of Persia and he was the founder of the Achaemenid dynasty. It was the first worldwide empire in the world before Greece and Rome ever existed. The person who uh, united the little pieces of Persia and founded uh, what we call uh, well, Persia or Iran of today. Uh, Cyrus the Great uh, was a just ruler who was ruling about uh, four-fifths of the universe of his own time. Actually, Cyrus the Great was a just ruler that introduced human rights to wherever he ruled. And people were free to uh, practice their own religion, faith and culture in any way they wanted. And it was a new thing in his own time. Actually, Cyrus the Great uh, declaration of human rights was parallels to uh, the universal human rights declaration of today. And his writings, his instructions were all recorded on a clay cylinder, which is kept in the United Nations and it is translated into six languages of the world and uh, I can explain more about this later. Thank you so much for sharing that. So with the rich culture and history of Persia, why do you think that many Persian people are migrating from Iran to New Zealand or other countries? What is your point of view on that? I think this is the nature of any human being to seek for any better place to live in. And Iranian community and people are also of no exception. So they try to live in better places and study in better universities and find jobs in better countries to live in. And uh, in the last uh, 40 years or so, many Iranians have come to multicultural countries like New Zealand, Australia, United States, and they've been living here to enjoy the benefits. So I know that you're on the board of directors of the Persian community here in New Zealand. Could you tell us a little bit more about the organization? Well, uh, Persian community is a small community in New Zealand. However, we have done lots of activities, educational program, arts, uh, concerts, and so on. So uh, we have done lots of good things in the past, but these activities have not been ongoing and uh, we expect to make it ongoing if we can get New Zealand government support and then we can direct the New Zealand community to a better positive environment that they can serve this country better. Of course, I agree with you on that and that actually brings me to another point because um, as you know, the Persian community, they want to be more active, the people want to be more active within it and you brought a good point that New Zealand government could do something more a little bit and support us. Um, so. What can the people do specifically um, to contribute to the New Zealand society? What's your point of view on that? Uh, I think uh, people can uh, be more proactive in this regard. And uh, I know that Persian community have been able to do a very good individual uh, activities. Uh, but they have had the lack of unity. So if they be more united, and also uh, get some support from New Zealand government and some sponsorship. I'm sure they have the ability to uh, continue these activities and be more positive to New Zealand society. Right, so that actually brings me to a point that you said earlier because a lot of people from Australia would like to come to New Zealand, Persian people and uh, vice versa and the other way around from New Zealand to Australia. Yeah. So how do you think we can link these two communities together so we can learn from each other um, and achieve more things and have more profitable events, more educational events? What's your point of view in regards to that? Well, I have seen the migration uh, have been from both sides. Many uh, New Zealanders are coming to Australia uh, for their own reasons. I mean, New Zealand Australians are coming even to New Zealand. And that's the same for Persian people living in New Zealand and Australia. They also come here for some, better, some job opportunities if they find a better job here. Or vice versa, they can go to Australia to find better job opportunities there. Uh, I think the Persian community here is very small, but even though they have uh, small resources, they can do still great things. 
and since community is much bigger in Australia, so the businesses uh, here and there can be more connected to get more power. And they can work together to achieve better results. You know, one example uh, is uh, inviting the singers, as I told you. Uh, you know, when they invite a singer from Los Angeles, it's not profitable for uh, him to come only to New Zealand and go back because you know it's a long way and it's not profitable and the uh, population or well, the tickets they sell are limited but when they you know cooperate together and somebody else sponsors him in Australia then at the same time the same singer can come to both New Zealand and then to Australia and make it more profitable and make these programs uh, ongoing and more active you know this is just an example but we can uh, go beyond that and uh, encourage the new zealand uh, businesses to work with uh, australian businesses to work together to achieve better results that's all i can say of course i agree with you on that because our ultimate goal is for the new zealand persian community and the australian persian community to be linked together we can learn from each other provide more resources and uh, also contribute to new zealand society and we can learn more from new zealanders and they can learn from us and all together united living under one roof so i really agree with what you just said so thank you very much for joining us in this interview mr savavi it's a pleasure to be able to speak with you about the persian community the history of persia and i hope the new zealand government as you mentioned could provide a little bit more support to the community so we can achieve goals put some educational programs on and contribute to the society and contribute to New Zealand as a whole so thank you very much for that you're welcome God willing and uh, I wish the good things to come for the generations to come thank you very much and don't go anywhere we'll be right back with more on the community TV show Knowing the history of the country you live in is very important, especially for the immigrants who are choosing a new country to call their home. That's why we are at the Auckland Art Gallery Centre here in New Zealand and we're going to have a chat with Mrs. Frug Emin. She's going to tell us more about the New Zealand history and her foundation. So let me take you there and we will have a chat with her now. Hello, Mrs. Amin, and thank you very much for joining us in this interview. It's a pleasure to have you on. Um, before we get started, could you please tell us a little bit about your occupation and when you decided to move to New Zealand? Uh, sure. Thank you for having me here. And uh, my name is Farooq. I'm originally from Iran, and uh, I've been in New Zealand since 2015. So um, regarding occupation, I can say currently I'm occupied with two separate but related paths of career. So I'm the founder and the chair for Iranian organization, Iranian Women Organization in New Zealand that was founded in 2020, a very young organization. And beside that, so my husband and I are running a startup business called Justry. Uh, that's a platform, a digital platform for migrant communities. So it is a platform that helps migrant communities get the services they need from providers who speak their language. So basically the idea behind this startup business is just to remove the language as a barrier from lives of migrants. So as I said, two separate careers, but both of them related to communities. Of course, that's fascinating. As you know, we're in the beautiful Auckland Art Gallery, and I'm wondering if you can take us a little bit deeper into the origins and the history of New Zealand and the Maori people? Sure, I don't have that wealth of knowledge about history, but as much as I know, 
the first uh, settlers of New Zealand were ancestors of the Maori. So they were people coming from Polynesia. They were, I think, just exploring the Pacific, you know, like navigating by star, by winds and currents, and then they arrive in New Zealand around 13th or 14th century. And after that, like 400 years after that, people who arrived here were Dutch. So the Dutch explorer who came here, I think around like the 17th century. And the interesting thing is that the name New Zealand was given to this beautiful country by the Dutch map maker. So, um, Apparently, there is a province in Netherlands, in Holland, called Zeeland. And this map maker, when he arrived here, I think he found this place very similar to the Dutch province. So he called it New Zealand, and that's how the name came from. And after that, I think around 150 years after that, the British Captain Cook, he arrived here with his crew. And it was after that time, I think around the 17th century, that gradually more and more European migrated here to New Zealand. And it was in mid 19th century, in 1841, when the government in the Britain, so they decided to uh, sign a treaty with the chiefs of Maori, so it was called Treaty of Waitangi. And it was the time that they signed this agreement to all of them living under the same law. Well, that's actually really fascinating because as opposed to Persia, over 9,000 years of history, New Zealand has around 380 years worth of history and um, anything that's been recorded. Yeah, I think so. So as you said, uh, Persia or old Iran is a very, very old country uh, with about 10,000 years of history. And in case of New Zealand, it depends if we look at the early settlement here that dates back to about 900 years ago when the ancestors of Maori came here, or if we look at the European settlement here. So since then, yeah, we can see that uh, you know, the establishment of the government here, the history is just less than uh, 200 years. But you know, uh, for me, what matters when it comes to history, uh, it's not the numbers, you know, it, it is what we get from the history, you know, the lessons that we learn from the history. And I think New Zealand and Iran are good proof to that. So I'm really proud of living here in New Zealand because as you know, New Zealand is the first place in the world, so a very young country, in less than 50 years after establishment of the government, they gave the women their right to vote. So women's suffrage was first introduced here in New Zealand. It was the first country before Australia, before you know, Britain and other countries. So these are the good things that, you know, if the history can give us these kind of things, then we should really be proud of. Wow, no, thank you very much for that. And actually, your answer brings me back uh, to another question I have in mind. What made you uh, build and start your organization for Iranian women in New Zealand? Oh, well, so as I said, I came here in 2015. Uh, the first few years was not you know, easy at all. So I felt lonely, homesick, you know, desperate, hopeless. So, and it also made me to go back to Iran, actually, in the middle of my PhD studies. So I left everything, I went back to Iran. Finally, I could manage to get the PhD. But yeah, I'm just saying that it was really difficult. But when I came back here about three years ago, everything was totally different. So uh, the world, you know, around me was the same. It was me who had changed. So. I had married to a man who I can say is the, you know, the greatest blessing in my life. And I was pregnant with my baby girl. So many things had changed. I had uh, you know, gone through a kind of spiritual transformation, if I can call it. So after that, actually a few months after having my baby, I just decided to review again and you know, make a decision about what I'm gonna do from now on. So, as a part of those changes that happened inside me, there was a decision to leave university because I used to teach at university for about 10, 11 years. So I just decided to leave academia and be more involved in the community, especially with women, because you know the main idea was to help women not go through the experiences that I went through, you know, like all those uh, loneliness and you know homesickness. So yeah, I decided to start this women group, and I didn't expect it actually to be so much well, you know, embraced by Iranian women here. 
Thank you so much for sharing that. Well, we're not done yet. I still have many more questions for you. But before we go, would you like to take a walk through the art gallery and see some of the paintings? Yeah, sure. That would be great. Of course, because I actually saw this painting, which is the Lake Wakatipo in New Zealand in the South Island of the Otago region, which is beautiful. And there are many more beautiful paintings like this one. So yeah, shall we take a walk? Definitely. Perfect. Thank you. So the tour, it was beautiful. It was, it was Paintings, really good. Paintings, photography, everything. It was just that from local artists to small artists, yeah. big artists. It's really nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was really rich. Yeah, every piece of art was unique and you know, it has some meaning behind that, of course. Exactly, and I think the people from our community actually should um, come in from the Persian community and view these arts and really experience New Zealand and get to know a little bit more about it. Yeah, definitely. I recommend all Iranians living here in Oakland coming and visit the art gallery. Exactly, and I'm excited because I have a few more questions for you. Sure. Um, and it's mostly about your accomplishments and your achievements. So could you please just share with us a little bit what have you achieved and your accomplishments um, within the Persian community in New Zealand? Well, I'm not sure if we can call it accomplishments or not, but we have been making an effort, you know, to bring Iranian women together. So we have been trying different programs and activities. But behind all these activities, we have been pursuing two important goals. One has been encouraging more empathy among Iranian women, or I can say Farsi speaking women here in New Zealand, just bringing them together and also empowering them. So we are just trying to raise our voice, to raise our awareness and just to become more empowered through the activities that we are doing. Yeah, and you know, if I'm gonna talk about accomplishment, the best thing that I think we have achieved in these two years is that uh, we have given our women a place, a center, you know, somewhere to refer to. Uh, I doesn't mean necessarily, I don't mean necessarily like a physical place, although we have a small office, but mainly like, you know, some kind of uh, place that they know exists if they need something, you know, when they need some advice or help or anything, they know that there are other women there, you know, available for them to ask for help. So that's, that's the best thing that I think that has happened as a result of having such organization. Wow, that's very inspirational. And do you think that uh, Persian people are quite active within the Persian community here? Or if they're not, could, how could they be more active? Well, I think there is a huge interest, you know, in having different community activity here in, uh, among the Iranian Persian uh, community here. But, you know, because of the COVID situation, so I think around two years ago, we had a very big New Year celebration here. So some wonderful women, they just came together and they hold this uh, New Year celebration here. But then COVID came and last year we couldn't, actually this year, we couldn't have this uh, celebration again. But there has been very good steps, you know, taken by different groups here. We have several radios now here in New Zealand. We have some schools, some academies. So many people in different cities, we are all working together just to, you know, find a way to introduce our cultural heritage to the New Zealand society. So things are getting better. Yeah. So of course, and I think if the New Zealand government could provide a little bit more support to the Persian community, they can really put some more educational programs, uh, social events to get us more closer, to get us more involved, to get us more active in the social society within New Zealand. Would you agree with me? Yeah, yeah, totally agree with you. And I think the government has been doing a great job, you know, supporting ethnic communities, including our Persian community here. 
of course. So we know that many Persian women, even in Iran, around the country, in Afghanistan, and all the way around all the cities, we know they're not being treated equally. We know they're being downgraded, and we know that they're not being appreciated as much as they should. So what do you think we can do to limit that, and what do you think we can do to help women and to give them the power they deserve? Yeah, I agree that the situation for women in Iran or in the Middle East is not good and not just for women, even for men, you know, totally. But when it comes to women and when I'm asked this question that what we can do to support women, I think the problem here is not just the government, it's not just the politics, you know, the problem is the society, is the culture. So I think the problem is inside us, you know, this patriarchal mindset that we all hold kind of, you know, the gender biases that we have been taught since our very, very early childhood, you know, growing up as a girl or as a boy, you know, living in a society like Middle Eastern societies, or I can say, you know, through the whole world, it's just like a matter of degree, you know, that women are not given their rights equally like men. So everything goes back to the mindset, to the way that we see women and also we treat women. So for example, just imagine the relationship in a family between you know, a man uh, and a woman. So you know, I can say that I support women, but when it comes to actual, you know, taking actual steps, like for example, with your wife, what do you think? Is it your wife's responsibility to take care of kids, to do the cooking or all the household chores? And what you are doing is just kind of kindness? towards your women or it is your woman or it is your responsibility as well. So I think everything goes back to, you know, these beliefs and attitudes that we are holding. If we want to support women, no matter if I'm a woman or man, I just need to review my beliefs and my, you know, my biases. And if I can fix them, then I think automatically women will be supported. Yeah. Well, that was an inspirational story and thank you so much for sharing that because you've been through hardships and you've struggled but you managed to rise through the ashes like a phoenix be reborn and share your experiences with many women across new zealand especially persian women and telling them that you can have power you can have equal rights and thank you for supporting them so Thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Thank you for all the compliments. Thank you very much. And I'm really hopeful for the future of women, especially Iranian Persian women. Thank of you. Course. Thank, Thank you for you. having me here. Welcome to Rumi Restaurant. In our warm and fascinated Persian design restaurant, you can taste the real homemade Persian cuisines and feel our tradition. You have the fresh air outdoor seating option at Rumi or experience our delicious Persian dishes inside the restaurant. Kebabs are our suggestions, but we also cook other Persian cuisines and bring it to your table to enjoy. Book your table now at rumi.co.nz Where would you like to live? Where is your second home? How far would you care to follow your dreams? Visayab will help you obtain visas for Australia, New Zealand, Europe and Canada. We will also support you with company registration, business investment, job offers and settlement services. We will show you the optimal path. We will walk every inch of the way with you. Choice, not chance, makes destiny. Hi, I'm Jabba. I cut your hair stylish and fashionable. Bathrooms Auckland specialises in top quality bathrooms, fantastic designs and the best service in New Zealand. Contact us today to receive a complimentary appointment with one of our friendly staff members on www.bathroomsauckland.co.nz
TV2 Australia brings you the most popular and exciting music videos on tracks. Nothing to Lose by Anthony Lucas. But you keep listening to your friends when they say I'm not the guy. And I know that it's hard Ashes by Blood and Jesse. Pray by Racket. Alchemy by Annie Scott. I am a teddy bear, funky teddy bear, bear with Teddy no Bear fear, by Teddy bear Kim. With software. Driven by an unseen force, a hero. Driven by Marilyn Steele. Not gonna stop right now by Viviana. Every day on Tracks, we are showcasing the very best of Australian singers, musicians, and bands. Watch something new and musical. Tracks, every 5 p.m. on TV2 Australia. Music is a big part of human nature. For some people, it's relaxing, and for some people, it's an energy booster. But the most important fact of all is that music brings us together. Today, we're in Auckland, New Zealand at Sofitel Hotel, and we will be introducing you to two Persian musicians who are going to explain about their musical careers and perform a Persian song for us, which is going to be exciting and get us familiar with the Persian language. Let's take you there. Welcome, I am here with Nadir and Amir, two Persian musicians, and we're going to have a chat with them and they're going to perform a Persian medley for us. I really can't wait, so let's join them. Nadir, Amir, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, it's just a pleasure, thank you very much. Thank you, it's my pleasure, thank you. thank you. Not a problem. Let's just start with a few questions because I really want to get to know you and also the viewers at home uh, want to get to know your careers and your background. So uh, when did you decide to move to New Zealand? Good question. Okay, you go first. Oh, you first. Okay. I've been deciding to get out from the country about 2010, so I think it's about 12 years now. Wow. Yeah. And you, Nader? I came to New Zealand around uh, 14 years, and uh, here it looks like it's paradise. I love it. That's great. And when did you decide to pick up musical careers? Music always been involved with me when I was too young. So back in Iran, I've been a musician as well. So when I came to New Zealand, still was with me. So try to find a good friends like Nader, Thank you. Bijan, yeah, and have a career together, have a company. So actually, you mentioning that brings a question to my mind. Are there many Persian artists slash musicians in the Persian community in New Zealand? Um, it's not much around, actually. I think it's just about four and five people around. Yep. Not many, and sometimes it's really hard to get in touch with them. Because our community uh, here is very small, and we don't have 
many um, musicians here. Hopefully we, we will get more people involved in the music. Of course, and do you think if other Persian artists or musicians could be more active within the Persian community in New Zealand, would it be beneficial to others as well, them being more active within the community? Definitely. If, they get, if we get more people around to have a, for example, if you have five to six musicians around plus another couple singers, you know, imagine this, how, how many activities all together they can have, how many in, in events they can run, you know. End of the day, uh, the Persian people in here, they will get, they will receive that kinds of um, beneficiary from us, you know. We are musicians, we play for ourselves, it's better to play for them, you know, make them happy. They can have a fun, they can enjoy it, why not? Yes, he's right. And uh, if uh, we have a more event, it's more better for uh, um, New Zealand or our community. That's great because at the same time uh, they're creating more events and they're creating more jobs actually which is going to be good for the New Zealand community and also it will give the chance to Kiwis to get familiarized yeah, yeah. with the Persian music and the Persian culture as mm -hmm. well. And how long have you been playing the guitar for? Ooh, that's another beautiful question. So. I think when I was born. <laughs> now, I think you know, I, I was about 14 or 15 years old when I've been here. My dad bought me a first guitar for me. That was hard to play, you know, <laughs> but I got it. Perfect. And how long have you been singing for? Around 25 years. 25 years, yes. When I was a kid, um, I practiced in my home for my parents in in bathroom. <laughs> Bathroom singing, yeah. yes. national echo. Yeah. Right? Yes, <laughs> but uh, yes, um, I was in in Iran. Uh, I was singing in for party, for wedding, for um, some events. Yes, I love this. I love this wow. job. And I'm sure I'm really excited and I'm sure all the viewers at home are also very excited because you're about to perform for us a Persian medley. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. No, I'm very excited. If you're ready, I'm ready. Yeah, we are ready. Right. I'm always ready. Perfect. <laughs> Let's take you there. Bohan, Mishe Mesle Moh Terakshi, Mishe Bezani, Setore Dashi, Bohan, Mishe Turuzoy Abri. Wow, that was amazing. That was great. Your voice and the guitar just Thank together, you. it sounded like a harmonic melody. It was just very great. But what was the song about? Because I'm um, for the viewers at home, so they know what you're um, singing about. Um, it's about a. Uh, it's, it's name is together, you know. So it's about a people's to just invite everyone to be together. With that kind of message, it's you can have power in your hand to do everything as long as you have everyone around. Exactly. And viewers at home, this is what Persian songs are about: love, united, and peace. And is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? Um, no, no, no. Just thanks for having us, and uh, special thanks for uh, Persia and the community and TV, TV two. two. 
Thank you. It's my pleasure to have you guys around. Thank you. And I hope we can put more shows on and some more Persian artists can join the community and together we can put concerts and uh, give back to the community. Thank you. It's been a pleasure Thank having you. you. And don't go anywhere because next time we're going to be sharing more with you about the Persian culture. So stay tuned for more. The best way to experience life is to learn the knowledge of experienced people. And that's why we're going to have a chat with Professor Cyrus Warren today, who's going to tell us more about his experience lecturing in universities, working, living in New Zealand, and he's going to tell us more about his book called The Wisdom and Wonder of Life. So let's take you there. Hello, Professor Warren, and thank you very much for giving us time to speak with you, and I'm really delighted to be here with you today. It is my pleasure. I'm glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Professor, before we get started, could you please tell us when you decided to move to New Zealand? We moved out of Iran probably 67 years, about 67 years ago, mostly because I was a Baha'i from Jewish background and they didn't like us. So, so the whole family moved out and some of us went to Europe to different parts. But um, the, uh, when I was leaving US to come to New Zealand, most people, most of friends were very critical, say, why are you doing this? Because um, <coughs> they, they, they thought, this is you're the best place. My wife was a trial attorney, and she was a prominent trial attorney. She had a big law office, a law practice, and employed a number of people. And she represented Walmart, which was the biggest employer in the state. And uh, for five years, she was defense attorney for Catholic Church for child abuse. And she was uh, on the paper all the time, every day, reporting the trial of the, this big trial which was going on. And I had uh, retired, really, but had gone into land development. And I had a big, big successful uh, business. So leaving the States, uh, it sounded foolish, but um, and my kids were telling me, 1, 9, 1, 12, why are we leaving? They didn't want to leave. So I was just telling them, wait, you will see, you will know who I am leaving later on. Now, one of my kids in physician in Australia, the other one was government, and they kind of stopped thanking me for bringing them to they were born in the state, or they gave up their citizenship. They didn't want to have anything to do with it because it's just too much. The problem has changed. There. As far as New Zealand is concerned, it has been a blessing for us. I, am, I cannot, I, absolutely, it's God's blessing for me. 
I, uh, I cannot describe my gratitude to the country and to the people. This is a blessing to be here, fantastic. It's not only nature in every sense. The gift of New Zealand is the people of New Zealand. It's not the land. <clears throat> the people of New Zealand, they don't know how much, how good they are. They don't know, really. They complain a lot. But people are very noble, basically. They're very nice. I love very the noble, people of New Zealand. Basically. They're very helpful. The land is blessed, really. Yes. There is a blessing in this land. So a lot of the students from Iran coming into New Zealand, they want to study for their PhDs or they want to study major medical subjects or scientific subjects. Uh, what do you think? Do you work with them or do they come I, to you? I'd be more than delighted to, to meet them and to work with them. Uh, I very much like to do that. That would be a wonderful opportunity. This is a different generation from what I had, uh, but this is new. But we have something in common, of course. I uh, have one thing in common. Yeah, my Persian is a little rusty, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but we can... We can uh... So, Professor Warren, what would be your advice to the youngsters, to the young people who are uh, coming into life for jobs, work, or studying? What would be your advice to those youngsters? Be positive. Being positive is very important in life and respect for others rather than being totally concentrated on your own self. You have to uh, question, what you have been gifted, so what do you offer? Of course. Trying to be a service to others. Okay, those were great advices. I'm sure they will take that on board. And what is the message of uh, The Wisdom and Wonder of Life, the book that you have right now? The wonder of life shows its beautiful experience. It can be beautiful. And the, the wisdom of it is that there is a purpose for creation. It's not random, so it's purposeful. So, any person who lives and does not come to recognize the purpose for his living, the, my belief is that God's message has been, I love thee, therefore I created thee. And love me that I may love thee. And if you lovest me not, my love cannot reach thee. So the human life is a love story. It's, uh, the society cannot see it today, but it is diverted from it. But the main thing is to recognize life is a beautiful thing and it's love story. It's, uh, uh, so the wisdom and wonder of life um, is a great book. It gives us knowledge about the universe, about us as people and about Earth. So where could uh, the audience at home uh, purchase this book? Uh, is it available online or in stores? Uh, if they want to purchase the book, they can uh, order it from Amazon or any or publication. And uh, I, I have indicated the book that I did not write this book for money and 100% of my share of proceeds of the book will be donated to charity. Wow, that's amazing. So it, it, it was a gesture of goodwill and gratitude. Um, I think the follow-up work, the scientific confirmations for the existence of a creator goes far beyond this book and it provides greater proof for the reality uh, that uh, human existence cannot be coincidental. So, Would you like to sure. read this? Yeah. Please? Professor Warren has marshaled an impressive amount of mathematical, biological. I will read that for the camera. So Professor Warren has asked me to read the last paragraph on page one as he said is very important. So I'd like to share it with you. Professor Warren has marshaled an impressive amount of mathematical, biological, psychological, 
and cosmological information to establish his conclusions the creation as we know it cannot rationally be a result of a random process. So I highly recommend this book. Although I've only read a few pages, I'm already intrigued. And Professor Warren has told us that you can purchase this book on many platforms. Uh, you can get it delivered and all the revenue of the books he sells will go straight to the charity, 100% of it. And it's a gesture of goodwill and his follow-up work will be coming soon. And I'm really excited to read the second book. I really wanna finish this first and get some more in-depth knowledge about My the universe. Pleasure. Thank you very Good much for your time, time. Professor Warren. Yeah, Thank okay. you. So Professor Warren, the last time I was here, it was without the camera, without the crew. We were just speaking about your book and your experiences. Um, and you mentioned that you did art before. And yeah, would you care I to was, show me some I of it? I was an art student at one stage in my life. Oh, wow. Uh, we can go upstairs, I'll show you some of the artwork. I have one painting, I, I, I had shows of my art, I had a display oh. of artworks, and I sold some arts and this and that one time. But uh, my new life, I love to do artwork, but I don't really have much time anymore. But I do like to show one, a painting I made when I was 17 years old. And some of my newer work, I can go show up still. Of course, shall we go? Upstairs, yeah, of shape. course, of course. This is the hub of Auckland CBD, where million dollar deals and business actions are happening every day. I will be having a chat with Mr. Clooney, an entrepreneur who's also the chairman of the Persian community in New Zealand and Australia, and we will see his points of view about the business lifestyle in New Zealand. How are you? How are you? I'm good, thank you. You're doing well. Good. Perfect. Hello, Mr. Clooney, and thank you very much for joining me in this interview. I'm just wondering if you could share with us a little bit more about yourself and your business experiences. I'm an entrepreneur, a TV producer, and the chairman of the Persian community in New Zealand and Australia. I have founded my uh, first media production company 
uh, in the year of 2000, about 22 years ago, which is called Image, and I have produced about hundreds of TV and radio programs, events, and uh, commercials for the businesses and uh, government departments. Wow, that's great. So you have a vast experience in the government sector, the private sector, and TV and your productions. That's great. Could you please uh, share with us a little bit about your experience specifically in New Zealand? Sure. Uh, business in New Zealand is a little bit different than uh, what we do in Iran. Uh, here we have a couple of facts we need to keep in our mind if we are immigrants from Iran in New Zealand and then we think of doing business in New Zealand. Uh, the first fact is about the categories of the businesses uh, which are the small businesses, medium-sized businesses and large businesses. Uh, what we talking about business in our community is usually a meaning of the a small businesses, people meaning or talking about small businesses. And uh, itself, the small businesses comes to two different categories, self-employed or corporations. Corporations means um, the company between two to 10 or more uh, people, employees working in one business, uh, producing or providing any service to the clients. And the self-employed businesses are the businesses with only one person um, running the business. Uh, for example, like plumpers or makeup artists or photographers, this type of businesses can be uh, registered uh, as a one person limited company and uh, as well as can uh, provide service to the clients uh, similar to uh, larger businesses. The second fact which we need to uh, think of before we running or starting any business in New Zealand is the size of the market. Uh, in Iran we have about 86 million people and uh, um, um, the market is very big over there but in New Zealand we only have 5 million population and uh, the size of the market also uh, is very low. So if you are migrating from Iran to New Zealand and you have an idea to create a business, you need to think of these two important facts uh, before you plan your business. And uh, I think with these uh, two facts, you can have better understanding about the next step of uh, your business plan. Of course, that was very well said. And what's your advice for the people who want to move to New Zealand for the first time and also set up a business along the way? What would be your advice? My advice is to not to do business in New Zealand. Uh, I think there, there are many uh, courses here. People can do a study, get a certificate and simply apply for a job in uh, some big corporations or uh, government departments and they can uh, slowly step by step uh, create all their goals and become successful in life however if you are very passionate and you would like to create a business and enter to the business life then there are some important uh, facts you need to follow otherwise you will not be successful. Uh, the first important things as my experience, I can see many business people here from our community, they cannot speak English. They don't know the language. Uh, speaking of the language is very important and speaking of the business language is the second important things people need to learn. Um, if you cannot communicate well, uh, you cannot sell your products or services to the people and definitely you will not be successful in business. The second fact is to study about business. You need to learn how business works in New Zealand. Uh, there are many information in IRD website. Uh, there are lots of videos teaching step-by-steps how to register a business, how 
uh, do taxation, how uh, you need to follow up with your business uh, rules, as well as it's good to receive advice from professionals. There are many good accountants in New Zealand, uh, good lawyer or financial advisors. Uh, you can talk about your business idea to them and they advise you, is it a good plan or good idea to start? and uh, they come with calculation and with numbers and you'll be more clear about what you would like to do for your business. Once everything is good and positive for your business idea, then you have to create a business plan for the business idea you have and make sure you're focusing and you're doing every steps of your business uh, similar to the plan which has been created. Also, one more important fact in business in New Zealand, uh, not only for the new people who would like to run a business, but also for the people who currently running business, is the promotion of the business. Uh, unfortunately, many business owners here in New Zealand, they don't understand the power of the advertising and promotion. And uh, they think, um, spending money, investment, the money in the ad advertising and promotion is just waste of the money and is the extra cost. But this is not true. Um, even you can see the biggest companies and biggest businesses around the world. Always they have advertising strategies and promote their business and uh, keeping the business in the high level. Uh, any business people, they need to promote their business uh, to the clients, uh, to the new clients or to the old clients to keep people um, remembering them about their business. And in New Zealand, the good news is the government always supporting small businesses about uh, promotion costs. Uh, actually, advertising and marketing costs is tax deductible, which means if you spend this money for uh, your advertising, by end of the financial year, you can uh, receive it back from the government. So government give this service to the small businesses because would like to support businesses and help them to grow. So people can take advantage of this law and, and get the best advertise for the business and that money will come back to them and the advertising costs would be free of charge for them and it support their business to keep go forward and achieve their goals. Wow, so it takes a, quite a bit to actually set up a business that's not as simple as people think. You know, there is a planning section, there is the actually doing the, the licenses and everything and a whole advertising. So you need to really plan it as well. You're already saying to us and I think that's true. And lastly, my question is, what is your advice to the people who like to uh, move to another country, move to New Zealand or to any other country? What's your advice to them? Um, my advice to the people who would like to emigrate, and mostly the people who would like to move to new place for better lifestyle, uh, which is the main reason of the migrations, is uh, first to plan your life, know yourself, and see who you are, what you want in your life, uh, what, what is your occupation. And uh, after you knowing yourself, you can plan your life better. Again, you need to do research about the new uh, location, new country you would like to move in. And not just pack your stuff and however, with any way, you move out of the country and go to a new country and uh, start everything from the beginning over there for uh, not knowing actual reason. If people want to have a better lifestyle or become successful, they don't really need to just emigrate or uh, move to a new country. We can, we can just uh, be successful in our own country in any locations, but uh, we have to uh, understand better and have a life plan and uh, that way I think you can uh, be more successful in life.
Wow, that was very well said. And thank you very much for joining me in this interview. And uh, your advices were amazing. And I'm sure the people at home also took some notes and now know what to do before moving to a new country permanently or setting up a business or how to do it and when to do it. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? You are welcome. I have a surprise for you and the audience of the show. Uh, I would like to take you somewhere, which I think it would be very interesting. Wow, you know, I love surprises and let's take you guys there with me too. Let's go. Where would you like to live? Where is your second home? How far would you care to follow your dreams? Visa Yob will help you obtain visas for Australia, New Zealand, Europe and Canada. We will also support you with company registration, business investment, job offers and settlement services. We will show you the optimal path. We will walk every inch of the way with you. Choice, not chance, makes destiny. Giant Burger is open and welcomes you to our restaurant at 71 Jellicoe Road, Panmore, Auckland. We make our foods with fresh meats and salads and serve them in the restaurant or for takeaway. Enjoy the most delicious, mouth-watering Persian-made burgers and fast foods at Giant Burger. We Kiwis love the outdoor lifestyle. Enjoying playtime and food with friends and family is what we do. Deckmaster will create a custom, quality-designed deck, bringing you a refined outdoor living space, allowing you to enjoy the lifestyle you and your family deserve. With Deckmaster, you can count on a magical space to enjoy a relaxing and fun quality of life. Deckmaster, the Deck Masters. Caspian Store is providing a range of Persian products to you. From sweet candies, dates, nuggets, or tahini halva, to ready meals, Persian food conserves, vegetable pickles, olives, rose water, and fruit jams. You will find it all in our shop. Would you like to try the charum rice with Persian saffron or special spices? Dehydrated herbs and fruits for a delicious cuisine? Or just try our fresh dairy products? Then what are you waiting for? We welcome you to visit Caspian your Persian shop in New Zealand. TV2 Australia, wake up your wow with the Kath Vincent Show. This weekly show is for anyone who knows they have untapped potential and wants tips and inspiring stories to help them live better professional and personal lives. 
The interview topics will include anything and everything that will contribute to long-term success and boost energy levels, confidence, and motivation on a daily basis. The award-winning professional speaker, Kath Vinson, undeniably walks her talk and is living proof of what happens when you wake up your wow. Health, wealth, fulfillment, and fun will be coupled with a business focus that draws on the expertise of inspirational and successful people. Watch The Kath Vincent Show every Monday at 7 p.m. on TV2 Australia. It's a big part of Persian culture and it brings friends and families together. And today we're joined by Fatty Boars and Mandan who run a Persian catering company in New Zealand. So let's have a chat with them and they will share with us amazing stories and amazing recipes. Mandan, Fatty Boars, how are Hi. you today? Hello, Good, how thank are you? you. Good, thank you. I'm doing great, thank you. Um, it's great to have you here. Thank I just you. wanted to ask you first, uh, when did you decide to move to New Zealand um, and how long ago did you make that decision? Uh, well, I came here like around 30 years ago, but Mandan came uh, 10 years ago and um, we started to open a uh, homemade Persian catering together and uh, since then has been going very well and we've been actually uh, by Iranian community been supported and other people so yeah wow. so far so good that's great and the Persian catering company that you do is called Sepahan and yes. you do catering for events as well yes uh, for weddings birthday or capacity up to 150 200 People. Wow, capacity, that's amazing. And uh, everyone says, you know, there's a debate going on between what's the <laughs> best, most popular Persian food from uh, stews to rice dishes. But what do you think uh, is the most popular Persian dish? Well, I would say kebab because the name of the kebab is an international name for the beautiful, delicious food. And uh, we would, I would say uh, we provide the uh, very traditional Iranian kebab, as you see, Mandan is going to do the mince, lamb mince and the chicken mince and chunks. Wow. So uh, kebab would be the first option for people who want to really try Iranian food. That's good. Um, so you do a lot of other Persian... Uh... Yes, we do lots of uh, uh, vegetarians and uh, meat stews as well, very traditional That's one. great. Yes. And people can order it through your website? Yes, we have a actually weekly menu and they can order it for the weekend in a number of orders if they like. That is great, that is great. And I'm really excited because you're gonna share with us some Persian recipes today, yes. especially the traditional Persian kebab, right? Sure. Amazing, and so we have different, so we're gonna do, gonna do a chicken one, we're gonna do a uh, mince one, and the traditional beef, uh, beef. Yes. Amazing, I cannot wait. Should we do it? Sure, of course. Go ahead. The one that Mandan is doing is the chicken pieces that has been marinated night before yeah. in some uh, secret sauce, of course, mm. seasoning, and now is ready to be skewed and uh, barbecue on a charcoal barbecue. Wow, that's great. So before we get into the other types of kebabs that we're going to try and cook today, I just noticed, what's this? This is saffron. Actually, you find it dry in a pack coming from Iran. It's very traditional, and we use it to give the texture, color, and taste to Iranian food, stews, and kebab especially. Wow, and I believe that uh, people say that saffron is the, the second gold or something because it's really, really expensive, yes, it right? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's very hard to grow 
take out and actually turn it to this uh, gold liquid. Exactly, you cannot do it everywhere in the world. There are certain types of places that you can. Yes, I would say the Persian one is the real and the most original one. Exactly. This is minced kebab, which is made by fresh lamb meat mixed with uh, grated onion, salt and pepper, which Mandan is putting it on a skewer. Actually, this is a skill to put that kind of meat on a skewer and when you cook it, it doesn't fall. Really? Yes. See, it looks easy, but I feel like it's yes. really, really hard well, to actually achieve. Mandan does, has done it for thousands of times, so she knows exactly what to do and she's very fast as well. Wow, amazing. Now, the meat been put on a skewer and is ready to cook. Already lit some charcoal, so should we cook it? Let's go, let's do it. Let's do I'm it. excited. First, I'm gonna cook some lamb pieces for you. Amazing. The chicken pieces, and then we start the mince. When the fire is very nice and warm, I really use this heat for the chunky meat. Yeah. This is chicken mince. You have to be very careful because you have to turn it over very good. You see it changes the color? Yes. But every time it changes the color, it means you have to turn it over. Of because course. it shrinks when it yeah. sees the fire. And you have to be careful that the kebab doesn't fall onto... Exactly. Yeah. That's why you have to be very patient when you cook the kebab. This is the steamed white rice, which has been topped by saffron, and you can have it with the kebab and Iranian traditional pickles, oh. been made by vegetables. So these are just vegetable pickles here, yes. and you have it with your food, yes. you put it on the yes. side? Yes, all of them different tastes, and everybody can choose whatever taste they like, with garlic, onion, or just pure vegetables. Wow. Or instead, you can have it with natural yogurt. That would be a very nice side dish for the kebab. Wow, that's amazing. I really can't wait to dig in. Sure. Give you a place so you can try a bit of every kebab Thank that you. you. So before I dig in, I like to familiarize myself um, with the kebabs again. So this one is the chicken. Yes. And this one is the... Lamb pieces. Let's try it with this chicken because we're going to have a selection here and we're going to take the lamb as well. And you serve this I'll with this rice, rice as well. Wow, that looks amazing. So we're gonna start with the lamb kebab first because yes. it just looks really, really nice. Please. And? I am speechless. <laughs> I am lost for words. Good on you. This is amazing. And the viewers at home, they can't taste it, but I'm sure they will want to try it whenever they can because this is just beautiful. Of course. So of course, uh, we have to try the traditional Persian minced kebab, right? Yes, this is wow. the mother of all kebabs. The mother of all kebabs. Let's have a try. Mm. So what do you think? I'm very speechless. You can really taste the onions. It's really tender. It's not dry at all. And uh, it just it's a really nice flavor. It's so intricate and so simple at the same time. Perfect. So this is the barbecued tomato. Yes. And this one is the chicken. And the lamb. And underneath we have some saffron and white rice, which yes, is steamed. Indeed, yes. That's nice. And did you say we have uh, three different types of uh, veggie pickles? Did you yes, say? yes. Uh, homemade pickles. Homemade are amazing. I can't design a plate, <laughs> but because you're you have a catering company, I'm sure you can design a better plate than what I just did. So where can people order this amazing Persian cuisine? 
They can simply find us on Instagram, Facebook, or they can Google us. I will definitely Google you myself because I'll be ordering you from every day from now on. And thank you guys so much for joining me and just showing me and the viewers at home how to make this Persian cuisine. Um, do you have any other advice you'd like to share with No, thank you very much for supporting us and thank you to NZ Persian community and Australia TV too. That's amazing. Thank you very much. And don't go anywhere because next time we're going to be sharing with you some more amazing Persian arts, culture and more. So stay tuned to find out more. Previously on this episode, we learned about the business life in New Zealand, but now I'm going to show you the financial side. That's why we're going to have a chat with Mr. Shahram Shor, who is a Persian financial advisor here in New Zealand, and he will take us deeper into the financial advisory role and more. So let me take you there. Mr. Shor, and thank you very much for joining us in this interview. It's a pleasure to have you on the pleasure show. Is mine. No, thank you so much. Um, as you know, we're going to talk about finances today and everything to do with the industry in New Zealand. But before we get started, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself and when you decided to move to New Zealand? As you know, my name is Sharon. I'm a director of the Trusted Advisor. So I come in New Zealand in 2009. And a little bit about my background. So I have been working in the medical sector in Iran for four years. And I was working in the biopharmaceutical company for three years. And I've been registered here as a medical lab technician. And that's the thing that just bring me to New Zealand. But why I go to the finance? <laughs> uh, when I come here, I get to know some people that are doing the finance, insurance, and those stuff. And I find a little bit gap in the finance stuff that the people don't know exactly about the insurance products and uh, how to pre represent their medical condition to the insurance company. And that's why I was thinking that, ah, oh, that's the point I can help th these people. So just better understand that what they need to disclose and how to disclose and the insurance company know everything about it at the beginning. That's why I started this job back in 2010, I would say so. Wow, yeah. so, you, so you've studied in the, in the uh, medical field and you've worked in the medical field, but as you just said, there's a big gap between medical and insurance here, but um, you managed to get into the industry. And is it hard to get into the finance industry in New Zealand? How did you find it when you were starting in? Uh, it was easy at the beginning, but now the regulations change. So you have to have a qualification, you have to have uh, proper system in place, you have to have your competency, your skills, your knowledge, then you would be able to advise on the financial things. Yeah. Right, so you definitely need a license and also the education background and also yep. the studies to get yep. into the yep. finance. Yep. Amazing. And do you have any Persian clients uh, within the Persian community here? Yeah, I would say more than 60% of my databases are uh, Persian. I'll just say about Persian and Iranian is a little bit different in here. I mean, what, what I'm saying is most of my clients are Farsi-speaking community. It can be the Afghan people, it can be Tajik people or Kurdish people or Iranian as well. So these are the mixture of different community in New Zealand. And what is your point of view regarding social activities within the Persian community here in New Zealand? How do you support the Persian community here? I mean, it's not just about the Persian community. In New Zealand, it's got the diverse community. We have 
um, like uh, English people, Kiwi people, we've got the Indian, Pakistanian, Afghanian from all around the world. And this is the most diverse country in the world, I would say, because of the population that we have. About five or six million people together, but we have different variety of different community. So most of the community in New Zealand, they are family-centric community. So our job is to just have a plan in place for those families to support them during their life. And they are not just a client for me as an advisor, they are part of my family. That's true and you bring a really good point because the ultimate goal for everyone in the world is to bring everyone together. It doesn't matter if you're black, doesn't matter if you're white, doesn't matter if you're poor, rich. The point is to just bring everyone together. And I think you made a point um, about you know, the financial situations of people in New Zealand. What is your point of view or advice, I should say, to the people who have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic? You know, they've lost their jobs, they lost their businesses, their homes and everything. Um, what do you think? Because the economic status I know in New Zealand and other countries are quite down. So what would be your advice? COVID teach us that our health is so we need to invest on our, our health. So you know that with all of those COVID things going on, so people, most of people, they affect mentally. So that's mental health need to be supported. The other side of it was the financial things, which again, affect the mental health. Yeah. And also their health as well. So if they get the COVID and those stuff. So those people, they have some plan in place so they can they survive during that time. If they affected by COVID, if they couldn't work, if they get redundant because of the financial impact on the company and they made lots of people redundant. So if they, when they have the plan in place, so they get survived for that time and they can find a job somewhere else and they get paid for that period of time. Oh, well, so all of the points that you just talked about, I'm sure it's vital to many people and I'm sure that the audiences at home are also taking notes and now thinking and planning ahead because you never know, you might be sleeping one day, waking up the next morning, it's locked down, there's a virus, a deadly virus, yeah. Yeah. so that's true. But do you have anything else you'd like to share with us regarding any advices or anything? It is important to, have, to know our community. It doesn't matter Persian or Iranian or Indian. It, 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 it is matter that you know other people to help you there in a community. So have a more secure place in, in the community. When you feel confident that there are other people, lawyers, finance people, or other people can help you in any stage of your life, I think that's the best way you can support your community. Wow, truer words could have never been spoken. And thank you very much for joining us in this interview. I'm sure the audiences at home are actually now uh, planning ahead for their future because you never know, anything could just change like that. So thank you for joining us and thank you for your time. No worries at all. Thanks for coming to the office today. Not yeah. a problem. Thank you for joining Cheers. us. Thank you. And don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more on Community TV Show. Persia is one of the most historical countries filled with thousands of years worth of history, talent, art, and music. That's why I'm going to take you to meet Mr. Rasul Abbasi, who is a Persian musician here in New Zealand and plays the Persian instrument called Kamonche. He will tell us more about his role in the Persian community and the music lifestyle here in New Zealand. So let me take you there.
Hello, Mr. Abbasi, and thank you very much for joining us on the Community TV Show. I'm really excited to have a chat with you, and because I know you're going to be also talking uh, with us about the Persian instrument, but we're not, I'm not going to get into uh, get into that yet. But could you please share with us a little bit about yourself and when you decided to move to New Zealand? Sure. Uh, my name is Rasul Abbasi, and uh, I'm a musician. I studied music in the University of Tehran. Uh, I moved to New Zealand with my wife uh, like five years ago. I came here to support her for her PhD uh, studies. And uh, since then, I live in Auckland, which I like it a lot. And it's a like, peaceful, beautiful country. And of city. course, yeah. of course. And I've heard that Auckland uh, is the city of uh, music or city of musicians, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, city of music means this, uh, this city, I mean, Auckland uh, uh, has lots of potential and there are lots of stuff going on uh, around this city in music. So lots of gigs, lots of, con lots of concerts, uh, many good musicians and yeah. Well, that's great. So when did you really start music? Was it something you started back in Iran or when you moved to New Zealand, you decided to pick up music? Uh, no, I started music when I was uh, 16, 17 years old and uh, by playing Camonche and uh, then I continued this uh, with academic studies in the University of Tehran. I uh, had some experiences to, uh, like uh, uh, art residency experiences and concerts around the world. Uh, I could manage to get one of those um, UNESCO awards as well. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was like involved in music professionally and uh, we had a few um, albums out in Iran. Uh, some of them are quite famous because of uh, we work with the, one of the famous uh, uh, singers of Iran, Ali Reza Qurbani, and they're quite good, good, good works and yeah, they are well known. Yeah, that's it. Wow, that's great. <laughs> and uh, do you work with other uh, communities or within the Persian community? Do you are you actively playing music, live concerts, or? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I've been uh, both in, involved in uh, uh, Persian music, presenting Persian music to the community. I mean, to the Persian community and the wider communities uh, in Auckland. Uh, by having uh, like a few concerts around in Oakland. And also uh, I've been involved with a few projects in different genres with the Kiwi ba bands, uh, like in jazz, fusion jazz I mean, and uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, one of the projects I, I really like, uh, uh, it was uh, like a research, academic research uh, in uh, Oakland University. Uh, it was about early music of Europe and kind of like uh, early music, modal music that uh, is kind of uh, similar with the Middle Eastern music. And we had a lot in common to share and just make music together. Well, so you've already accomplished a lot within the Persian community in Iran and also in New Zealand. But what would be your advice on getting the communities linked in other ethnic communities could link to Persian community and work together and be more proactive and have more shows. So what would be your advice regarding to that in the way of music speaking, really? Yeah, uh, I guess the best way is to uh, like having support from, I don't know, government or, or whatever. And uh, uh, like organizing events uh, for communities, different communities to play music. Uh, to, for musicians, I know lots of musicians here in, in New Zealand, in Auckland, I met them that they're from all over the world and uh, they rarely have the opportunity to just present their music. And if we, if we can have kind of like a, a regular events or something like that for musicians, uh, I'm sure there is a, a big p potential for that, that uh, uh, we can have uh, Every, every community can have uh, their music. They have their music presented to the other communities. They can enjoy themselves and they can share, they can learn from each other. I guess if we can have more of those kind of events, uh, 
of course it should be supported by the government or some some kind of organization because uh, musicians should be paid and music is like an international language it's, uh, it's something that is common between everyone and everyone can listen can enjoy can make connection and it's a i guess it's the best way to make connection between communities uh, and just uh, experience different cultures through the music exactly Speaking of experiencing different cultures, I think yeah. we're going to experience uh, this Persian instrument today. So what is the name of this? So this is Kamanche. Uh, it's kind of Iranian uh, instrument, although kind of similar of this Kamanche with this similar name or uh, existing in different uh, countries in the Middle East or uh, everywhere in the world. So in the Middle East, they call it mostly Kamanche. Wow, that's perfect. Now, how long have you been playing this instrument for? Uh, it's almost 20, 25 years. Right. Yeah. So you've been playing for about 25 years, did you say? Yeah. Would you care to add a few days to that and show it to us now? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited. I want to see how it sounds. Sure, I would love to. Amazing. Yeah. Yes, please, yeah. whenever you want. Wow, thank you very much for sharing with us this beautiful Persian piece. Um, I'm sure the audiences at home are now more familiar with the Persian culture, the Persian music as well. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having, uh, having me today here and giving me this chance to present Persian music to the... No, not artists. a problem. Yeah. It's our pleasure. This is Rasul Abbasi and the Persian instrument that he showed us today. And don't go anywhere because we will be back with more on the Community TV Show. Well, we've reached the end of the community TV show. There were many people who wanted to share their experiences and stories with us, but because of the program's time limit, it didn't allow us to do so. On behalf of TV2 Australia and the Persian community, I would like to thank the New Zealand government for funding our program. And I would like to thank the guests who have appeared, shared their amazing stories, and delighted us with beautiful words. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to TV2 Australia's YouTube channel, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Don't worry, because I'll be sticking around, and I'll see you soon in the future episodes. Welcome to Rumi Restaurant. In our warm and fascinated Persian design restaurant, you can taste the real homemade Persian cuisines and feel our tradition. 
You have the fresh air outdoor seating option at Rumi or experience our delicious Persian dishes inside the restaurant. Kebabs are our suggestions, but we also cook other Persian cuisines and bring it to your table to enjoy. Book your table now at rumi.co.nz. Giant Burger is open and welcomes you to our restaurant at 71 Jellico Road, Panmore, Auckland. We make our foods with fresh meats and salads and serve them in the restaurant or for takeaway. Enjoy the most delicious, mouth-watering Persian-made burgers and fast foods at Giant Burger. I cut your hair stylish and fashionable. Caspian Store is providing a range of Persian products to you. From sweet candies, dates, nuggets, or tahini halva, to ready meals, Persian food conserves, vegetable pickles, olives, rose water, and fruit jams. You will find it all in our shop. Would you like to try the charum rice with Persian saffron or special spices? Dehydrated herbs and fruits for a delicious cuisine? Or just try our fresh dairy products? Then what are you waiting for? We welcome you to visit Caspian, your Persian shop in New Zealand. Hi, my name is Siros Amadi. I am a registered migration agent and a director of Visa Yob Migration Services. At Visa Yob, we do all sorts of visas. Basically, whoever wants to come to Australia and New Zealand and is looking for a visa, we're here to assist. We assist with business migration, skilled migration, partner visas, family visas, protection visas, and so on. We also assist with settlement uh, for clients who want to settle in Australia after they get their visas. We also provide assistance with recruitment in some occupations, especially in medical occupations such as medicine.我对我在亚马迪博士和他带领的Visa要团队的经历感到非常开心。对于国际学生来说,一个专业的移民机构非常重要。他们不仅会办理学生签证,还会指导学生在毕业后找到相关的商业、工作以及家庭移民机会。我
Imagine that an online visitor comes across your site. There's plenty of text and images explaining what you do and how great your products or services are. But that's really not the way to grab the visitor's attention. After reading for one or two minutes, they will simply leave the site bored and you've lost the potential customer forever. Now, let's assume that instead of the boring text, you've got a one or two minute video explaining all the important stuff in a short but memorable format that viewers can actually enjoy. Studies have shown that videos are processed by the brain 60,000 times faster than text. So you can really give your visitors a lot of information in just a short while, which is exactly the way to earn attraction. People are also 39% more likely to share your content if it's delivered via video. This means that visitors will spread your story through social media and attract more people to visit your site. In other words, this is how you increase traffic, which is then reflected by search engines through an improved SEO rank. See? You're getting more and more attractive. Now, once you've got the attraction, let me tell you how videos help with conversion. 70% of marketers report that video converts better than other content types. Why? Because your prospects can now really see what you do or sell. Getting more detailed information leads them to making confident purchase decisions. Also, video enables you to really stand out from the crowd and strengthen your brand trustworthiness. But let me repeat the most important message here. People love videos. And you're proof. You just watched one, right? So let us help you. We can suggest the best video strategy for your business and produce it for you from start to finish. Contact us today and watch your business skyrocket.